Every online business, whether you're an affiliate, e-commerce business, or digital agency, needs a strong source of traffic to generate leads and sales. Video marketing has emerged as one of the fastest ways to generate qualified traffic to start building revenue using the number two search engine in the world, YouTube. One problem many marketers have is that they lack the videography and video editing skills to make videos consistently. Another problem is the time necessary to produce enough videos across their niche channels to generate sufficient traffic to their offers. Yive solves that problem. Within a few minutes and a few clicks, Yive can begin creating and publishing videos across your niche channels automatically. That's right, Yive can use your RSS feeds, written articles, PLR content, and web pages to quickly build and publish traffic driving videos for you 24 hours per day, 7 days per week, 365 days per year. Yive can also build Amazon product review videos within any niche you choose. Just enter product keywords and set your publishing schedule, and that's it. Yive does the rest. Want every page on your website converted into videos? Yive can do that. Want to drive daily traffic to your blog for AdSense or affiliate clicks using your RSS feed? Yive can do that. Want to drive product searches to your e-commerce site or Amazon at scale? Yive can do that. Want to promote your email list or a high converting information product? Yive can do that. Yive can do the video work to help you scale, so your success is only limited by your imagination. Get started today. Hey everybody, this is just a quick video I wanted to do um, for testing Yive, uh, the new version I actually started a new brand new Amazon account um, for this campaign just to test out um, the ability with a new account to start generating commissions right away. And um, through our testing process, there were about 200, maybe 220 total Amazon videos um, across some different niches that we made and tested as part of testing the release of the new Yive. And I just wanted to show you the results. Um, obviously, it uh, this account was created in uh, early February. Um, obviously, we started getting some clicks. Uh, actually, I'm sorry, at, uh, in early January. Um, and this is just looking at the last 30 days, but we started to get some clicks uh, in February. And this is just looking at the last 30 days. Um, you can start to see the revenue start to grow. Um, and there's literally only about 220 videos out there pushing traffic uh, to Amazon right now. And um, one thing, two things I really want to point out here. Number one, conversion rate, 15%. 15% uh, of the traffic that I'm sending to Amazon is converting. Um, and, and this is why I talk about testing a lot of niches, because you never know which ones are going to pick up. But then the second thing to consider, and I'm not showing the specific products uh, just to kind of protect some of that information, but I am showing you categories. Um, one thing I want you to notice in this column, I only had three direct clicks from, or three direct sales from clicks from my video for the product that the video was about. All the rest of my clicks, or, or I should say, all the rest of my orders were products that I don't have videos on. Um, so what's important to consider is that the mindset of people when they're shopping on Amazon or when they're looking for products is they're going to buy. They're going to buy something. They may not end up buying the product that you are recommending to them or showing them. But when they arrive on Amazon, they end up buying that or other products. Um, or sometimes just the other products. Either way, you're still getting paid on whatever they buy in that 24-hour session. Um, and as you can see, it's across the board. There's lots of different categories. Um, most of the videos I did were in the home improvement space, uh, have some power tools and um, business supplies as well. It's very interesting um, that we did videos with power and hand tools. Um, but we got no clicks from those videos um, directly from those products 
uh, that 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 actually converted, but people did buy. So sometimes it's not necessarily uh, that they buy from your, you know, clicking your link, going right to that page and adding it to their cart. Sometimes it's just in that session. Um, so, you know, basically what this column says is, hey, three of the products that people directly clicked on your links for converted. The rest of these are just people converted from sessions that were sent to Amazon from our video links. So keep that in mind when you're planning out your campaigns. It doesn't take a whole lot to start getting revenue. Um, as you can see, you know, $103 in um, commissions on $1,600, almost $1,700 in revenue. Uh, it is a low commission number when you think about it, but at a 15% conversion rate, that's why you use Amazon because that conversion rate is so great. Uh, so just keep going. You'll grow that number as you uh, continue to develop your campaigns. Have a good one. Hey everybody, um, this video is to talk about the keyword tag and the URL tag um, in all of the campaign types where they're used, such as the SMB and Castor campaign types. Um, the keyword tag you might be familiar with with the old version of Yai, we're going to go over it anyway. Uh, the URL tag is a new tag um, that we created for uh, this new version. Um, so. The keyword tag is basically um, this, what, what looks like this, which is the, the bracket keyword bracket, and it's the curly brackets. Um, and the reason um, we have that, it's a placeholder for swapping in your keywords um, based on the list you have um, in, your, uh, in, in your campaign. So for example, you'll enter keywords in this box here um, and this keyword tag will grab uh, each keyword in order uh, in this box and will use that keyword wherever this keyword tag exists so if you put it in the script of your video uh, and, and you enter this tag it will grab that first keyword use it there if you've got that keyword uh, tag here in the video title, uh, in the description, uh, in the tags, it's going to use that keyword, the same keyword for every placement. So for example, if our keyword uh, is uh, diabetes, just to stick with an earlier example, then every time I use this keyword tag, <clears throat> that word diabetes will appear um, and for every video it will use the matching keyword in each of these fields so um, it's not going to change up the keyword between each of these three fields in the same video um, each video this keyword for example diabetes and we'll say diabetes diet for example so for the video using this keyword, it will say diabetes in each of these fields. Um, you can ask, add other text and it's spin tax is supported. So you can of course um, put that keyword tag wherever you want in that content. Um, so likewise, like the keyword box, we have a URL box. Um, and this is was requested by people who basically want to be able to switch the URL um, in their description. Um, I don't know that there's a lot of scenarios for doing this, um, but I do understand there are um, uh, split testing different rebrandly links, which lead to redirect to different products, um, would allow you to actually swap them uh, between videos so uh, again what it's going to do is take these URLs in order that you have listed here um, so you could have um, product one.com product two two dot com um, and then wherever you're using the URL tag say for example here in the description um, for 
keyword one, capable diabetes, and put it there, and then URL one, and we'll grab product one and put it there. Um, and it will rotate through that way. Um, now, if you have an even number or a, an exact number of keywords, say 10, and 10 matching URLs, there's no problem. It will match each of them up. But if you have six keywords and you have two URLs, um, it's going to rotate through. Um, so keyword one and keyword three uh, and keyword five would get this URL. And keyword two, keyword four, keyword six would get this URL. So you can see how you know those rotations would work. So just keep that in mind with how you're going to use this. Um, you don't have to use the URL tag, so just leave that blank. Um, don't use the tag anywhere, and you won't have to worry about um, whether or not you're going to have the wrong URL being used. Um, you can just add your actual URL, uh, whatever that is. So if it's rebrandly product one, it will always use this URL um, uh, in this description. So this again is only this URL box is only if you want to change this URL, rotate through a series of URLs for whatever reason. Most people talk about split testing multiple products more quickly across a single campaign doing that. Um, when we get into um, the script here, this is a spin tax video campaign. Um, that you could see how important that might be if they start using if a user is using spin tax, um, basically multi making multiple versions of the same article um, that are all unique because the spin tax is unique. You could see where then it would make sense that they would want to rotate through URLs to see which one performs better. So, uh, any case, when I say perform better, I mean from a conversion standpoint. Uh, any case, uh, that's really all what this video is about, just understanding both this keyword and URL tag. Again, if you have any questions, please post them in the support area. We'll help you out as soon as we can. Thanks. So this video is to talk about another really important topic, particularly as it comes to any of the SMB campaign types and the caster campaign types. Um, uh, which are spin tax, specific URL, multiple URL, the RSS, and the keyword campaigns. Um, there are two boxes, uh, two fields in the campaign setup for all of those campaign types um, that are really important to understand. So number one is the keyword box. And this is typically the keywords that you want used in your video as far as uh, keyword rankings, trying to rank videos, trying to get videos to show up for certain keywords. This is where your keyword research keywords go. So if you're doing a video on weight loss, your keywords there are going to be things like weight loss, weight loss plan, weight loss diet. All of those are going to go in that keyword field. So as you typically understand keywords to be, that's what would go in this keywords field. Um, we have another field, though, called asset keywords. This is something very different. Um, and I can tell you right off the bat, if you copy the keywords from this box and then just paste them in this box, um, you're going to be somewhat disappointed with the results if that's all you do. Um, so the reality is that you have to understand what this box is for. So um, for any of the campaigns where the system is going to select assets for you, um, which is this option down here and this option here with the slide, um, what you're trying to do is give the system an understanding of what types of assets are acceptable um, for your video. So for example, if your keywords are weight loss, weight loss plan, weight loss diet, stuff like that, um, your asset keywords can contain weight loss, but you also have to have words in there that would match up with assets that could actually uh, go with that. So word, like just the word diet, for example. Um, so for example, if I had weight loss and I had weight loss plan, weight loss 
diet, you get the point. Um, you can take these keywords and you can put them in here, but you can't just do that. You would have to start adding other keywords for assets. So like diet, uh, healthy, fitness, exercise, uh, food, eating, um, all those kinds of things. Um, these are all ideas of, of, uh, of different types of video clips, image clips that the system can use in your video um, that would be appropriate for your video. Um, so if you go through these campaign setups and you just take your keywords in that box and then just paste them in your asset keywords box, um, you know, you're not going to be happy with necessarily the, the assets that get picked for that and just seeing the same assets being used over and over again in all your videos. Um, the more asset keywords you can add, the better your videos are going to turn out. So any of these types of keywords, and you can keep just some lists that you know go with certain topics you work with, and just make sure to add as many as you can. Um, single word keywords are always going to work best. Um, adding as many as you can is going to work best. It's going to cycle through them to find assets to try to make sure we're continuing to make all the videos in a single campaign as unique as possible. Um, so if you use this asset keyword box correctly, you're going to be much happier with the results you're getting, even if you only have a few keywords in this few, this keywords box to be used for your actual videos. Uh, the more unique we can make your videos, the better off, uh, the better the performance, the better they're going to stick in your channels and the likelihood that uh, they could end up ranking. Uh, so that's it for this. If you have any questions about asset keywords, be sure uh, to post a support ticket to us. Hey everybody, um, I wanted to get into a very, very important um, part of the system um, and do a separate video on it and make sure you guys understood uh, just how powerful this part of the system is and how you should be using it. Um, so one of the big benefits of Yive is that you can create a campaign um, where you are making a lot of videos or consistently making videos, but then spreading those videos across multiple channels. Um, this is uh, what I consider to be risk diversification. So uh, if you lose one channel, you're not losing all of your content. Um, again, in other videos, we talk about adding accounts, and we're talking about adding lots of accounts. Um, we have some um, beta users who have nearly a thousand accounts in the system. Um, and the reason is because they want to spread their campaigns across multiple groups of channels. So the idea behind a YouTube group is that you can actually form a specific set of channels to go in a single group. So if you have channels that are, say, dedicated to health or weight loss or fitness or something along those lines, uh, you can create that here in uh, the group. So um, what you would do in this part of the group is, uh, or in this part of the system, under Stacker, you would go to YouTube Groups and it would load this screen. And under the screen, it's very simple. You're going to actually name your group. And then you're actually going to start typing in the names under your YouTube accounts that you want to add to the group. Uh, so as you get a name, you select it. Um, the names appear in the list as you start typing. You select the correct one, and it adds it to this group. And you can add as many YouTube accounts to a group as you want to. Um, so you should make sure to take advantage of this. So if you're going to do a campaign um, that's potentially about a, a weight loss product, uh, more than likely that would make sense to go in a group of channels about health or fitness or, or weight loss, something along those lines, and rather having than having all of the videos go in a single channel, you would have them spread out across multiple channels. Not only does this reduce the chance of 
losing valuable videos if an account gets shut down. Um, but also, it gives you multiple I opportunities to rank with similar videos. So when we get into things like spin tax videos and um, the SMB, uh, uh, SMB U, uh, specific URL videos, things where you are able to actually make videos that are unique but very similar, uh, you're going to want to spread them across channels rather than putting them all in the same channel. And this gives you the power to do that very, very easily. When we go through the campaign setups, you'll see where you can select between adding individual channels or adding a YouTube group uh, to how your uh, videos should be distributed. Keep in mind, anytime you add a group to a campaign, the uh, system will distribute one video per channel at a time. So it will rotate through the channels, adding one video from the campaign to each one until all the videos are distributed um, and it will do that cycling through each channel to add a video. So if you have a, a need to produce a single video and put it in a particular channel, you can just build a campaign that does that where it produces one video, you select the one channel, and that's where that video will go. Um, it kind of defeats the purpose of what Yive is about, but you can certainly do it that way if you want to do it that way. So um, that's really it about uh, YouTube groups. Uh, I'll just do a really quick demonstration of it. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to add a um, fitness uh, group. Um, and um, I'm going to go ahead and start adding channels. So what I'll do is um, I'll start typing names. And it's okay. So uh, that, that right there, I've already added two channels to that. I hit submit and then it saves uh, that particular group and I can always come back and edit this and add more um, and uh, you know try to maximize the number of channels I have to distribute to uh, in a in the fitness group um, when I'm promoting a fitness product um, so that's it hopefully uh, this helps again if you have any questions please uh, post them in the uh, support center thanks Hey everybody and welcome to the tutorial on creating an Amazon campaign. Um, so to do that you're just going to go under campaigns, you're going to select new campaign and then you're going to come over and you're going to name your campaign. So I'm going to, um, I'm going to do some videos for Hummingbird Feeder and I'm going to select uh, Amazon campaign and then I'm going to click on next step. Once I'm on this screen, this is where I'm going to select uh, the Amazon site um, that I want to send the traffic to and um, the products that I want to uh, have promoted. So if you're an Amazon.com affiliate, um, you would obviously select Amazon.com. If you're in other countries, obviously you want to set uh, this to be the country um, where your Amazon affiliate account is actually promoting. So um, .fr is France, .uk, .in, India. Um, so just select the one that corresponds to where you have your affiliate account. Um, then you're going to come down to this box and you're going to type in your product keywords or the actual ASINs of products um, that are in Amazon. So um, the ASIN you would find on actually the product page down in the product description area. Amazon's um, product ID is what the ASIN is. You can always, if you want to make sure you're getting a specific product, just put in the ASIN. You can put a combination of ASINs and keywords in. Um, the only products it's going to list are products that have reviews um, have at least 150 words of uh, four or five star reviews. So if you have, uh, if there's a product in there that's a three-star product um, and there aren't very many four or five-star reviews, it is going to skip it. Um, if there's no reviews, it's going to skip it. Uh, it's only going to pull products that actually have reviews um, so that, uh, you know, your, your likelihood of actually getting a sale is much, much greater. Um, yes, that does eliminate some products. 
but the reality is there's so many products no matter what you're searching um, that there's plenty to promote um, you don't need to waste time on products that don't have reviews or and therefore very unlikely to convert so I'm gonna go ahead and uh, type in my uh, keyword and right now I'm very specific I want to guess just get hummingbird feeders um, for this campaign so I could do bird feeders and get all kinds of bird feeders um, but I like to do things that are a little bit more specific because it only takes a few minutes to create a campaign and I really would rather if I if I'm going to do other types of bird feeders put them in in other campaigns um, in the event that I want to build channels that are specific to a certain specific subset of the hobby uh, bird watching and things like that um, this gives me the opportunity to really focus that so I'm gonna go ahead and hit search and the system will pull back the available hummingbird feeders um, that are listed you can always request more so you hit load more and it will select more so again you can see there's something that turns red and disappears those are um, products that don't have sufficient reviews uh, to create a video um, so once uh, all these products are selected they're automatically checked to have videos done for them you can certainly uncheck them just by clicking this um, or check them all by clicking this uh, if you do uncheck them you can just select certain ones like that um, that would enable you to uh, actually really fine-tune what products you want to actually make videos for so we'll go ahead and I'm gonna select all of these and I'm gonna get hit save and go to next step um, so uh, we we have the ability to make videos that are up to 12 minutes uh, however for most Amazon videos they're gonna be shorter less than four minutes typically you can always adjust the timing um, and the uh, the duration of videos um, just because you select a 12 minute Amazon video doesn't mean that there's enough content for a 12 minute Amazon video so um, you know we can only have a video where the Amazon's content uh, can really be supplied for it so um, we can't just magically um, come up with content that doesn't exist to make a 12 minute video so we do suggest kind of staying in the 15 to 20 slide range um, within Amazon videos and a duration of seven and ten seconds per slide that usually works out optimally uh, for Amazon um, so then you can select whether or not you want text overlay on your video so all of your review information actually gets overlaid on, as text on the video um, so you just check this box is always checked by default you can uncheck it if you don't want that the next thing you want to select is whether or not you want to use a uh, text-to-speech voice over your video um, and this is something in our old version uh, that we required you to use however talking to a lot of Yive users and my own personal preference um, we decided to make it an option um, so basically for your audio you either want a voiceover with background music just a voiceover or background music only um, my favorite selection with Amazon is the text overlay with video with background music only um, there are some out there that are still using the text-to-speech and adding the voiceover if you do just select that um, then you also want to come here and to the next box and select what voice you want to use so you have two choices you have Amazon voices and you have Google voices um, you can also select the English um, English or non-English uh, versions of the voices um, they're just in these lists once you change them and then the actual specific voice uh, so if you select one of these you can actually listen to a sample of it long time no see it's Kate here and I will see you at the talk at the library tonight so you can of course listen to the different voices um, if you're not hung up on which voice gets selected you can select randomly 
Um, you can also do that for Amazon where you can pick randomly and the system will choose a voice for you um, to go with your your audio. Um, but again, if you don't want a voice, just hit music background only and the voice options disappear. Um, on the outro, um, you of course, this is optional. You don't have to put anything in here if you don't want to, but you can also put a call to action at the end if you choose. Um, I generally speaking to a mix of videos that do and don't have this at the end. Um, but you know, it's up to you how you want to do it. This used to be a required field. It is no longer a required field. So once we've made these selections, we save and go to next. And here we are, we're on the page where we're going to set up our publishing schedule. Um, so right now by default distribution is none. That means it is not going to actually be uploaded anywhere. So obviously we want to do, do want to upload our videos. Um, we don't want to necessarily have to manually uh, declare which videos get uploaded. So we go ahead and we select auto. This manual option is here for you. Um, if you actually want to look at all the videos first and only choose which ones you like to upload, uh, that was a request we have from a couple of people. So we did add that as an option. Most of you should be working with auto so that you're not wasting time uh, looking at videos consistently. That's, that's totally up to you though. So once you've selected this option, again with none, there's no upload options, hit audio and then your upload options appear. So in this case, um, you can select individual YouTube channels if you want. I'm actually going to go ahead and I'm going to select a group. Uh, Home and Lifestyle is the group I'm going to select. Uh, it gives you a number of how many uh, YouTube accounts we have in this. And right now I've only added two. I have a bunch more to add before I activate this campaign. Uh, so I'm just setting this campaign up. I will go back. I'll add more accounts to this channel, uh, this group channel, before I actually launch the campaign. But it gives you an idea to make sure you have the right group and you, have, you, you know how many uh, accounts are actually connected to it. Your upload interval. So obviously if you have a lot of videos uh, in your campaign, uh, you don't necessarily want one being uploaded you know, five minutes apart um, from your different channels. Uh, again, depending on how many channels you have and how many videos you have to rotate through, uh, you could end up adding two videos to the same channel, in which case you don't necessarily want them uploaded at the same time or close to the same time. So you can set a default um, minimum amount of time uh, in minutes before uh, the same channel gets another video. So we say that in this case, um, if we circle cycle through all our channels and we get back to the first one, we want to make sure it's 60 minutes before we upload another video uh, to it. Uh, then we come in here and we select our Amazon Associates tag. Again, I only have one tag, um, so uh, it's easy for me to pick, but there will generally be a drop down here of all of the ones you've entered to do that. And then you want to add your video tags. And this is just, uh, just like uh, on YouTube, um, you know, how you would enter tags. generally re recommend seven tags um, with commas in between. Uh, I'm, for the sake of brevity, I'm only entering five here. Or I should say uh, four here. Um, then you can add a call to action to the first line of your video. Um, this again is now an optional field. Um, if you don't enter anything in it, um, it won't add anything or append anything to your title at the very beginning. You could add something like this if you want, um, anything like that uh, to draw attention, um, but you don't have to. And most most of you requested that we make this field optional uh, so that you didn't have to have something in there all the time. So we listened to you and we made that optional. Um, these two boxes are really important. So with every video, we automatically put the Amazon link in the video and that's at the very beginning. However, we did have requests to be able to add 
information to the beginning of the description box before the URL to Amazon. Uh, so that box can be added here. You can put URLs in here. You can put text. Uh, spin text is supported, so you can do that as well. And then this box is for after the Amazon link is posted. You can add again any text or URLs, uh, spin tags if you want to um, maybe link to a blog of yours or another video or another channel, things like that. You can do that. Um, and uh, you can add a translation files to the back end. Um, you just check this box and then you check all of the translation files that you want added. Uh, this is one of these little uh, kind of ranking secrets uh, we often hear about, um, particularly in low competition areas, um, being able to get the transcription file um, to, to a lot of languages where people natively searching might find your video to show up first. Um, particularly, um, you know, if you're in a European Amazon program, um, having these is really going to help you out. So just keep that in mind. If you do set up SynLab and SynWire, you're just going to hit this refresh link. It will log into your account. It will pull all of your groups. You can select which group you want to use, and it will actually post your videos um, to those groups. It will grab your YouTube embeds, your YouTube links, and go post them to those groups. Um, just like um, SynLab and SynWire are designed to do for you, we go ahead and do the heavy work to move those into your SynLab and SynDWire account um, for those syndications. Um, and then um, this parameter here is very important. So depending on how many channels really gives you a leeway on how many videos per day you make. So for example, right now I only have two channels connected. Obviously, before I run this campaign, I'm probably going to connect somewhere around 50 overall to this group um, so if I ran and said okay I wanted to make as many as uh, 50 videos per day that means I'm only gonna be publishing one of these videos per channel um, which is fine and I could publish all 50 of them in one day because I'm spreading them one video per channel uh, and that's not a problem however if I only had two which is what I currently have I don't know that I want to post 50 per day um, because I only have two channels. Suddenly both channels would have 25 videos in them at once and that's going to probably draw a flag. So we don't want to do something like that. So I'm going to say for right now because I only have two channels, um, I'm only going to do two a day. But if I add 20 or 50, then I'll bump my number to 20 or 50. So really pay attention to how many video uh, channels you have lined up uh, for distribution to kind of figure out how many videos per day you should be pushing out um, from the campaign and then the last two boxes render automatically so we recommend checking this box uh, and always we have this on by default this means as soon as you start the campaign it will start retrieving the assets and building the videos for you um, and then obeying your rules regarding distribution up here. Um, so, you know, we recommend doing that. If you don't have this checked, even if your campaign is active, it won't do anything. You'll have to actually go in and request each product get rendered individually, and that's probably a pain, and you wouldn't want to do that, but of course it's there um, in case you want to actually look at the video before... Um, you know, look at all the slides of the video before we render. I think that's a waste of your time, but that option is there for those of you that want to do that. So um, we, we're trying to make the system as flexible as possible for what people are going to use it for. Um, we didn't build this to be a your all-in-one video producer, um, but if you uh, learn how to use your parameters, you can make it do that for you. You can edit everything that gets made in Yive according to what you want it to be. Um, but, you know, you just got to understand how to let the system do certain things for you and then have where to come in and, and do editing. Um, but if you're a person that, uh, you know, you don't want to spend a lot of time editing videos and going through them, 
and and that's what I am, I suggest leaving render automatically on. And then this last box, you actually have to activate this last box. Um, campaign status, um, it, it is off in this position, it is on in this position. If you save the campaign in it with it off, it will save all your parameters, it just will not run till you come back and you turn it on and hit save again. Um, there are a lot of you, like in my case, um, right here, I don't have all of my channels added yet, but I did want to go ahead and set up the campaign. So I'm going to leave it inactive and I'm going to save it. And then once I've got all of my channels added to my group, I'm going to come back. I'm going to turn this on and save it. And then it will start running and doing the distribution. Uh, so that's really all there is to all of these um, settings within the Amazon campaign uh, type. And if you have any questions on this, uh, simply, again, go over to the ticket area, open a ticket, let us know. Remember, send us the campaign URL, video URL, wherever you're seeing problems so we can quickly jump in and, and see how we can help you. Hope this helps, and we'll see you in the next video. On Friday, we hosted our second live with Search Engine Land with four leading local SEOs discussing how local and multi-location businesses are coping with the coronavirus crisis. Google My Business was a central topic and there were numerous questions about how to handle business hours updates and specifically when and how to use temporarily closed. As a follow-up, I asked Rio SEO's Crystal Tang, a GMB Gold product expert, to summarize and clarify some of the discussion around business hours for those who didn't get a chance to attend. SEL, when should you use special hours and when should you use temporarily closed? KT, if your business has adjusted hours or is temporarily closed for a short period of time, less than two weeks, you should use special hours. For longer extended closures, two weeks or more, you should use the temporarily closed status if you're able to. SEL, are there different rules or advice for chains, franchises versus individual locations? KT, marking a business as temporarily closed can only be done manually in the GMB UI, so my suggestion is to only use this option if you're managing a small set of locations or your franchisees are managing each location themselves. This is not ideal management for a multi-location business or agency that supports chains. SEL, is it true that when you use temporarily closed the business will disappear from the rankings? KT, this was true previously but given the increased use of this feature, the GMB team worked to ensure temporarily closed businesses are treated the same as open businesses. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe.
police are investigating the theft of a Vincent van Gogh painting from the singer Laren. Many tourist hotspots have closed to help prevent the spread of the coronavirus over the last month, including the Singer Laren Museum in the Netherlands. While the Dutch museum was closed, the Vincent van Gogh oil painting Spring Garden was stolen in an overnight raid, according to a Monday report from CBS News. We are deeply shocked, angry and sad. A beautiful and moving painting by one of our greatest artists has been withdrawn from the community, singer Laren's director Jan Rudolph de Lorme said in a statement on the museum's website. It is terrible for the Groninger Museum and also for singer Laren, but especially for all of us. Because art is there to be shared, to enjoy, to be inspired and to be comforted, especially in times like this. The 1884 painting was on loan from the Groninger Museum for an exhibition titled Mirror of the Soul. A statement from the Groninger Museum's website confirmed that police are investigating the theft. Visein deep jeshukt, booze and verdriatic. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe.